Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where today we've got a hell of a lot to get through. So let's just get straight back in with it. Um, so we're spending our minimum science and the first thing I've purchased has been the uh, docking ports and the Kerbal attachment like toolbox, if you will. Uh, and the second thing I buy is landing gear because I've got no wheels and I need some wheels. Right, so that done, we're going to go off to the uh, vehicle, it's not the vehicle assembly, but the, the space plane hangar because we want to build this thing. So we start off with a uh, cockpit we can see out of that's very important and a whole host of science which is also very important uh, we've got double materials bay double um, goo canisters and double temperature scanners also known as thermometers uh, that's all the science we want we also need a fuel attachment point we're gonna put two on here because we also want to put one on Keith's froggy waiter um, coming up next we also need some landing gear and some power uh, also a reaction wheel and monoprop wouldn't go amiss either. Hopefully I'm now going to put the monoprop all around the center of mass um, so that when we run out of monoprop we're not actually running, at, uh, we're not shifting our center of balance around um, and you can see me just fiddling about with it there. Alright next things up is to put some um, RCS at points equidistant away from the center of mass um, and hopefully that will keep everything balanced with, and with the addition of some uh, landing gear which should hopefully look like that, that that's it that's all that, that's what we're gonna send to Minmus um, this is like the science vessel um, oh I haven't put any solar panels on okay, we, we, we can't have running out of solar power out of Minmus though now that I think about it having the uh, cockpit on front means that we that electric charge isn't really that important maybe for lights and stuff like that um, but yeah anyway so what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump forwards to um, this situation right here where all I've done is put it up on its end put uh, two like standard fuel tanks underneath that with a skipper engine uh, some large small fuel tanks and some solid boosters obviously all made in the space plane hangar so it's got that beautiful sort of double line symmetry running down the center of it right there uh, and we uh, we've not asparagus the the outside tanks but we've put them feeding inwards so that the, the skipper engine is what it is all about so first day first set of staging went perfectly well and second set of staging also went perfectly well and now we're just going to spend some time looking around um uh you know what i think i might just like jump us to minimus because how many times have we seen this launch now uh, it's about five or six so yeah let's jump forwards to this shot here just to show that i have actually left kerbin and not just like cheated my way up also because that will make a brilliant um thumbnail for the the, the video but yeah, with that bit done, we're going to Minmus, yay! Alright, um, so I've already spent almost all my fuel getting me here. Um, and indeed... Oh, well, well, that capture orbit, that capture burn went incredibly well. I thought that wouldn't actually uh, have enough fuel there, but obviously I did. Uh, so we're now going to leave this in a high minimum orbit, which is... It's not ideal, but I don't have any fuel to get it down. Um, and you'll also notice now that this um, this science vessel here, I, I think... I can't remember what I called this vessel. Hang about. The Biome Bouncer! Of course, what else would I have called it? Uh, it doesn't have any liquid propulsion on it. There's no rocket engines, there's nothing like that. We are now fl flowing solely on monoprop. But given Mimus's uh, ultra-low value of G, I think that should be alright. Um... Yeah, I mean, monoprop only gives a little push, but then Minmus only gives a little pull, so that should be fine. Uh, so we've got there a beautiful shot of me shop, a beautiful shot of me dropping down to Minmus with Kerb in, in the background. If you didn't notice it there, well, you know, it's too late. It's gone now. And we're ripping down to Periaps, which is conveniently situated on the other side of the planet from where I want to land, um, so that we can. Uh, it's convenient because then I can bring the other side down which you know, is what it's all about. It's about changing your orbit on the other side of the circle. If you haven't got that yet, you need to go and figure that out because that's all about orbital dynamics. It's all done 180 degrees on the other side of the circle. Yes, indeed. Um, so at this point, I'm finding a maneuver node that is on the same equatorial line as my landing spot and just setting up a maneuver node that will put me over the top of my landing zone, which is blatantly where I want to be. Um, once I'm there, I should be able to get ourselves down nicely. 
because, you know, monoprop. Anyway, a few inclination burns later and messing around with my orbit, I end up with this lovely thing with the blue line going over my landing zone, which is exactly what I want. I mean, literally, that is exactly what I want. I do appear to be going the wrong way around the planet, but that's all right, because once we land, we're not going any direction around the planet. So, uh, you know, who cares? Um, we can see in off on the horizon there, because now we're close enough to the planet, we do indeed have a horizon. You can see what the landing zone that I'm aiming for. I, I think that's the landing zone we're aiming for anyway. Um, and given that we're um, a few kilometers away, I, I'm not sure how many kilometers away we are, uh, I'm going to start adjusting my orbit because we don't want to overshoot too far on monoprop because monoprop doesn't have an amazing sort of... I don't know what the what, what's the thing with like how much power it can give out at once. It doesn't have any. Uh, it doesn't have a great maximum thrust. I'm gonna go with that. Um, so anyway, with that done, we've just come in within the 30 kilometer line, and we can start easing ourselves into a, a, a gentle approach. Um, gentle because whilst I have been playing this game for a hell of a long time now this is indeed my first monoprop only landing uh, every time I've always had either rockets to to help me down or I smashed it in a horrible burning ball of mess um, but this one should go fine why do I say that because I've already done this in the past and I know what's going on but not <laughs> not to trivialize what I'm doing here of course Ah. Anyway, with evidence of my clairvoyance aside, we're going to uh, watch me plummet down. I think plummeting's a bit of a strong word here. I'm more of making a graceful descent. Uh, I, I do wish I was a little bit lower down to the ground when I was making these movements, but this is where I'd put my orbit. This is what we're going to do. Uh, so we're going to turn the, the, the spacecraft around, the bio bouncer around, so that we can face the way we're going. And not, we're not trying to break our orbit anymore. We're now making a nice controlled descent, and that is very steep blue line there. But anyway, uh, if we if we face our bottom, yes, indeed, face our bottom towards the way we're going, we can then use our, I was using the K key to push up um, to uh, control our descent. This is also a point where the void system is completely invaluable because it, it's got the vertical and horizontal readouts on the top right there, uh, which means that I can, I know how fast I'm going down and how fast I'm going forward, so I, I can be sort of more accurate about it instead of like the one down the bottom that just tells me how fast I'm going in total relative to it. And, and that's, it's useful and it's not, um, it, it, it's useful when you're up in, in like orbit, but when you're going for the floor, you want, you want both those numbers, um, or at least I wanted both those numbers anyway. And due to my continual faffing about with this particular descent, what we're going to do is jump to this point here where we can sit around and watch my spectacularly graceful landing. A small bounce doesn't mind, doesn't matter too much on Mimus though. Um, thankfully these landing legs are uh, particularly strong and I was moving quite slow at the time. Um, only like a handful of meters per second when I when I bounced, which on Minmus is fine. Well, on, on anywhere is fine. If you're only moving a couple of meters per second, that's cool. Anyway, a quick, um, quick glance at my, my flight data thing. The, you know, the F3 key tells me nothing's broken. So we uh, shift our orientation round and we make our way towards the uh, mining zone. Now, what you'll notice I just did there was bail out um, in a suborbital trajectory at the top of my arc. What I was trying to do was get like an internal view and see what that was like. But, you know, obviously I've messed it up and I'm not going to do that again now. Uh, and also with this design of ship, Beware the taking off from a slope because you end up going backwards because, or whichever way down slope is because you are tilted that way. Um, obviously, it's not too hard to correct for that, but that's, that's something to be aware of if this is the first time you've ever done anything like this as it was at my turn, at my turn, right, right here, you know. Of course, as always, despite everything, Jeb is loving the new situation he finds himself in. Uh, obviously, this was a new uh, new propulsion concept, so we sent Jeb up because he is the test pilot and he needs to check everything. But this does mean we need to try and bring him back at some point. Uh, so you notice that every now and then I turn off the line and uh, break down to, to zero speed again. Uh, this is because, well, I think this is because of the spin of Minmus. Whilst I'm in the air, Minmus is spinning underneath me. And if you notice on my uh, nav ball, my pro, uh, yeah, prograde marker keeps spinning off to the side, which I can only assume, as I say, is the uh, the spin of Minmus. So 
with a lack of lateral control, because for some reason I only put uh, RCS on the side, which is a little bit of a mistake. I should have put one in the center of mass on the top, or in line with the center of mass on the top, so I could push it sideways. But that that's that's some consideration for uh, a, a later mission. If I ever get round to remaking this, if uh, heaven forbid we should happen to smash up this particular vessel at some point, then I will use this as a base and and uh yeah make it better anyway we have uh, a little bit of groundwork to do um uh, jeb's going out with um the pipe end point you remember the second pipe end point that we put on there uh he's grabbed it off of that and he's now taken it over to keith throggy waiter so that he can pop down the the attachment just like this for some reason it's not doing it there we go and then we link them up if he can ever actually fly. Yep, yeah, there we go. Green line out of his back. And ba boom Oh, no. No, no. No, here we go. A little, little bit of uh, flying around. And there we go. These are now technically one vessel. And with that, I will say thank you very much for joining me for this fast-paced adventure. Uh, we will be back next time with the return ve vessel for, for Jeb. There, something's going up. And also the one that's going to take all the, uh, the, the science back. But until that time, thank you very much. And I will see you next time.